Steve and Gary. Well, how are you? <laughs> Hold on, I'm just finishing up with the Japanese radio station. Just a minute. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm a big fan of the umbrellas. All right, bye bye. How are you? <laughs> Good. We're fine. Albert, Albert. You don't remember us, do you? From of course about... I remember. You had the only live audience radio show in America. I came down. I thought I was going to be on the radio. I walked in. I didn't comb my hair. I had that junk in my eyes, and there were 400 people sitting there. <laughs> yeah, you looked unhappy at that moment. <laughs> well, I wasn't happy. I couldn't see. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, we're very, very excited out here in L.A. The Academy Awards, the first time in history a doctor's been nominated. <laughs> we're gonna, my dentist wants to get into the movie. <laughs> we're going to be out there Monday night covering that. We bro- really? I'm going to be in Chicago on Monday. <laughs> we, we broadcast live uh, from the red carpet when they all walk in. Like we're like the army archers of the uh, of the nineties. The red carpet room or just the red carpet? No, no, not at the airport. Uh, you know when they walk down the red carpet to go into the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Oh, you're going to be there? Yes. Yeah. We just stand there and shout things at Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I would like to know something. Maybe you'll be the only one to ask these questions. Please find out where they rent their tuxedos. Why? Because I have a gathering to go to in two months, and I want to find the cheapest place. <laughs> Uh, well, we saw uh, Lost in America last week, and it's extremely funny. I'm very glad. But uh, what do you expect from an Albert Brooks? Nothing. From an Albert Brooks. Yeah. An Albert Brooks, like there's three of me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought... Well, you know, it's funny. We opened in Washington, D.C. today, and I'm looking in front of me. I got two rave reviews in the Washington Post, and the Mooney paper didn't care for me. The Mooney paper? Yeah, you know, they have the Washington Times. It's owned by Reverend Moon. Oh, that's right. And it says, the first sentence here, he's not a moon, but we still liked it anyway. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, he's in the motion picture business as well, isn't he? Didn't he do MacArthur? Um, I'm, uh, I don't know. Oh, 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 I think he did, yes. Yeah. I, I think he might have had something to do with Baby that's coming out. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this movie's doing very well for you. Well, so far, yes, it's doing. Good, how about for you? Good PM Magazine question, Gary. Yeah. Yeah, this thanks, good, Gary. Well, now, Steve, now, you guys don't have a live audience anymore. What happened? Well, we have some people outside the window here. We have a window that goes out into the hallway, and people are welcome to come up and look through, and there are some out there, but not 400. Really? It's funny how the tables are reversed. I have 400 people <laughs> in my office listening to this phone call. And I, we have sleep in our eyes. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. There. Go ahead and make some noise out there, sleep. Hey! Hey! I wasn't making fun of your clothes. <laughs> we still have uh, retained, uh, you know, some semblance of an audience. Yeah, well, you know, you guys are legendary. You and know, WLS, you can hear, uh, well, on a clear night, you can hear way out of Illinois. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> way out. I picked you up in Denver. Yeah? But it, it was a tape. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Well, I thought one of the funniest, uh, and I uh, first I have to say, we're very nervous talking to you, because... Of all the f- of all the funny men in this business, and don't you love it when DJs pretend they're in your business? Uh, well, you are. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm sponsored by Pontiac too. <laughs> <laughs> of, of all of uh, the people uh, in the world trying to be funny, you're our absolute favorite. Of uh, <laughs> oh god, no, no, no. you're our absolute favorite, our well, favoritist. You can't see me right now, but my face is red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we might lapse into PM Magazine questions on you just because, you know. <laughs> Please. We don't want to. How about our magazine questions? <laughs> we don't want No, we're not that good. Big Gary Collins fan, are you? Huh? Big Gary Collins fan? Well, I miss. I, I, there are three shows I don't miss. That's one of them. I just think when he's away from Marianne Mobley, he's really amazing. <laughs> yeah. When he can spread his wings a little bit. That's right. He reminds me of early Steve Allen when he was away from Jane Meadows. Yeah, yeah. When he does a cooking segment, maybe with a walk or something. I'll tell you something. That's how I learned to cook. (laughs) On that show. Have you seen Lifetime Cable where Regis is now? Yeah. Isn't that something? That man exercises more than any other human being at this point. I know. That's how he keeps thin, by being on cable. (laughs) (laughs) Also because they don't pay well, I think. (laughs) Well, you know, whatever you can eat. Whatever you can eat, you know? I, one of my favorite parts of the movie that nobody seems to pick up on, at least in the interviews I've read or heard and uh, in the reviews that I've read, uh, is the beginning with, with uh, Rex Reed. Isn't that great? I'm glad you mentioned that. That's one of my favorite parts, too. It's classic. I and know. It's so subtle, and nobody uh, talks about it. So I, I know. Well, there he was. He was, you know, I just... Uh, I, I had been a Larry King fan for a long time. I was listening to Larry King, and I took a chance, and I wrote them a letter, and I said... 
had you ever interviewed Rex Reed? And sure enough, they did, and this tape came, and it was like sent from heaven. Everything you ever wanted to hear, and there he is just talking. I don't like to see movies in the daytime. I like to see them at night. And I don't like to see them with an audience. I like to see them alone. Has Rex Reed reviewed your movie? No. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, he hadn't. Want me to give you my impression of Gene Shallot reviewing my movie? Yeah. Oh! Here he is again. This time he goes to Las Vegas, then he goes to Hoover Dam, then he gets lost. Here's a clip. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Steve, I think Steve saw Shallot do that review. No, I think he saw Joel Siegel do that review, but they're the same person. <laughs> they walked into each other once at 20 miles an hour and blended into one man with a mustache. <laughs> with, with a big, thick mustache. Yes. A big, thick mustache and a big, thick man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Albert, Albert, Albert. Yeah. So what do you think about Reagan now with two hearing aids? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well. Hey, I got a brand new bit I've been working on. Let me try it out. This is Bob Hope as he gets older. He doesn't do the punchlines anymore. He just does setups. Here he goes. Hey, did you see that Reagan? Is he wild? Hey, and what about that Russian guy? He died. Did you see that? Hey, I just drove a Pontiac. That's a wild car, isn't it? Hey, I was just down to the desert the other day. Was it hot down there or what? <laughs> Hey, have you been to Chicago? Is that a wild place? Hey, did you fly TWA? I'll tell you. That's some airline. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. He gets a little older. He doesn't even do that. He sounds like this. Hey, did you see that? Hey, what about this? Hey, is that wild? Hey, I can't believe it. Can you? Hey, what about this? Oh, yeah. I was working on that in the car. Uh, I got arrested here for talking to myself. Police are so strict in L.A. Yes. Guy yeah. pulled me over. He said, who are you with? I said, no one. He said, here's a ticket. <laughs> Maybe you were in the diamond lane. Hey. The Neil Diamond Lane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, well, uh, there's they a, say you can't be funny on the phone. I yes. am Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nothing to ask you. You don't uh, need our questions to promote. No, the as a matter of fact, turn it over to me. I'll do your spots. <laughs> and now we uh, turn it over to Numero Uno and yes. uh, back to Numero yeah. Uno. Hey, did you ever rent a car? Is that a wild experience? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so anyway, I must say to you that of all the things that I've ever done, I, I was I never seen a four hundred people audience in a radio show. It was it was amazing. What happened? How come you don't do that anymore? Well, that the principle of that was uh, uh, to do a breakfast club, but meaning back in the thirties. Uh, that was the real. You know I mean, breakfast club, the movie. No. Oh. <laughs> back in the thirties or forties, WLS had the Breakfast Club on the air with Don McNeil. Hey, did you see that movie Mask? Is that wild? <laughs> I can't believe it. You know, they say he had calcium deposits. I thought he should have drunk skim milk, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm sorry I lapsed in the Bob Hope. I can't help it. That's okay. We all do. Uh, As a matter of fact, there's a new movie on Mask 2 where the young boy only does Bob Hope. Oh, so you Mask think, 2, the beginning. You, you think Cher's going to get the award for this one, huh? I think she has to have a, I, I, I personally believe she has to have a last name in order to get a trophy. <laughs> in order to get a trophy? Yes. You can't get anything made of gold unless you have two names. <laughs> That's the rule. Well, it's a new rule. Yeah. Uh, have you ever... So you're, you're coming out for the Oscars. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. Well, I, I wish I could listen, because I'm sure your commentary will be better than anyone else's. It's exciting out here, really. You know, five pictures that no one's seen. We're all excited. <laughs> oh. Anyway. It's about time Mozart got a movie made about himself. <laughs> 300 years, I mean, really. I know. I'm working on one with Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> it's a winner. The main, the main selling point was when his ear got cut off. <laughs> you could see the ad. He's holding his ear. There's blood on the ear. It's a real effective ad. Uh, yeah. And it, is it, the movie's called what? It's called Van Gogh. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Madonna's uh, going to sing the, sing the theme, theme song. Madonna? Madonna. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean in English? Mother? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, uh, well, you know, we're very excited. Uh, you can tell I'm secure. I haven't mentioned the movie yet. Yeah. Like, well, we've been doing that plenty for you. Well, then let's not talk about that. Let's talk about you guys. Uh, well, we are, we're intimidated by you a yeah, little bit because yeah. you're so great. And no. What can I say? I mean, I'm intimidated by you. I can't hear you. 
<laughs> that was all part of the plan. I know. To try and bring you down to our level. You know how I know you're successful? How? When you said, hold on, I had to listen to 16 spots. That's right. We're jam-packed. That's why we don't have an audience anymore. I, as I soon can as, understand. As soon as we became successful, we said, we don't want to hang out with these people. I wish I could hold on and go to Denver and see if I could pick you up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a shortwave radio here, but I can't get you. Uh, so what not... did you think of that Reagan press conference? Was that wild? <laughs> was that wild? I... Well, uh, we saw the movie. <laughs> Very funny. I heard you on the radio show say you should practice driving to Winnebago before you drive one. Oh, that, another thing I wanted to ask you about. The parallel parking job at the end. That was me. That was you? Uh, that was me. That was incredible. You couldn't see me, but that was me. It was incredible. Um, they're very dangerous things. You know, someone asked me, I did an interview yesterday, and someone said, well, if she didn't lose the money, what might have happened? And I said, well, I don't want to put down any, you know, motorhome company, but take it from me, Winnebago's don't last more than 18 months. <laughs> Peek under the carpet, it's balsa wood. <laughs> You go over a bump, the W turns over, it turns into an M. <laughs> yeah. It's not the most, uh, it's like the Nova of motorhomes. Is, is that right? Well, you know, I can I can say that because they didn't help us out at all. Really? We asked them to. We said, we're making a movie. We need your help. Could you give us a motorhome? The guy said, we don't know who the hell you are. Buy your own motorhome. <laughs> so now I get even by talking on the largest show in Chicago and saying they stink. <laughs> They don't really stink, but the best thing about them is the refrigerator. There are good refrigerators in there? Very good refrigerator. When the motor stops, your food still is cool. <laughs> and does it have the little pin that you insert in there to keep the door closed while uh, you're... No, you have to put the one chair they give you up against the door. <laughs> All right. Don't ride over bumps. Find smooth roads and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You'd think they'd be cooperative since the motor coach business is not exactly booming these days. Wouldn't you think so? Yeah. It's amazing to be cocky like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like Mel Torme saying, I won't sing on your show. Uh, same thing. Same thing. Let's uh, pause here and come back. Uh, fine, I'll do spots here in my office. <laughs> What, what, well, why don't you just do the break for us and say we'll be right back? No, or... I'm sponsored by people, too. That's how I make my money. Yeah. We'll be right back. Now a word from Chris, who gave me $48 yesterday. It's 535. Thank we have Dad. Albert Brooks on the phone. God, you have a helicopter? Yeah. Yeah. I do, too. <laughs> okay, Julio Iglesias. <laughs> Julio Iglesias. And Julio, Julio Iglesias and Ozzy Nelson. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. What about Ozzy Nelson? No, I'm saying I have one of the rare videotapes of those two. Oh. He goes, oh, the girls I knew, and then you'll hear, uh, 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 wait. <laughs> Didn't it say in the Inquirer that he throws th clothing away after he wears it? Gee, you know, I can't hear you at all now. Uh -oh. Or maybe that just wasn't funny enough to hear. Yeah, we uh, we put a filter on. Anything that I say that isn't funny gets filtered I out. The, I have the same filter. <laughs> it's a but good... I sold it to Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. So how is the traffic today? Uh, uh, normal. For a Friday. Well, you know, we're out here in L.A., and uh, as you know, Oscar fever is just, it's extraordinary. How is Oscar fever? Oh, God, uh, it's all people are doing. They're renting tuxedos. They're renting gowns. It's like Sissy Spacex said, do I have to work with an accent again? <laughs> so you never go to that thing i imagine go to that thing i don't even watch that thing <laughs> you don't even watch it huh? i don't play clarinet but i go on monday night and listen to woody <laughs> uh, well, that's... Well, it's very exciting oscar you know oscars are i mean oscars are oscars what can i tell you uh actually i'm a little bitter because when i made this movie real life i wanted to in the opening scene i wanted to hand out chocolate oscars and the Academy of Motion Pictures wouldn't give me the rights to make an Oscar out of chocolate. Really? So uh, I have a memory like an elephant, and I'm a little bitter. I'm sorry. Are you serious? You were going to do that? Yeah. In the gymnasium there? That's right. And then have people bite the heads off or something, or what? Well, I mean, I couldn't even get that far. They wouldn't even give me permission. <laughs> yeah, but then it, it inspired you to write the song, and... Uh... Not really. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we spent a lot of money to have chocolate Grammys made, but we couldn't make, use them. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Well. So what do you think of that prince? Is he wild? <laughs> hey, I, I, is that prince wild? How about that prince? Hey, he looks like Richard. He looks like little Richard, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> is he? Is it like little Richard Dreyfus? <laughs> <laughs> ah, Albert, Albert, try to be funnier. Huh? I have a question right. for you. 
I have a serious question. Yes. Who is Monica Johnson? Monica Johnson is one of the funniest women in the world, and it's the person I've been uh, riding with for a number of years, and she's just wonderful. She's very, very funny. You would, you would like her. Yeah, well, she certainly does the great work with you. But she certainly does. I, I have the greatest admiration for her. And, and plus, she probably keeps the notes, right? She keeps the notes, and she saves the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> has she done other stuff? or? Yes, she has. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I should name them, because they're, of course, not up to the quality that we work with, but uh, <laughs> she has written. She's writing uh, a movie right now all by herself for the Geffen Company, the same company that I uh, I made this movie for. You know David Geffen? Well, personally. Oh, sure. Yes, sure. he used to have a record company called Asylum, which, uh, as you know, in French means... Those that can't work elsewhere. <laughs> but, uh, you know, life is wonderful. I, uh, I heard from Linda Ronstadt, who I used to go with. She called me up. She said, gee, I never understood what you did. <laughs> but she's singing opera now. Is that wild? Isn't that wild? That wild. How about that Linda Ronstadt? I want to tell you. I want to tell you. to look up the word aria. <laughs> oh, well, Catherine Harold said that uh, when she worked with you, she loved it. But when she worked with Pavarotti... She really had a good time. Yeah, that's right. She thought he was three people. <laughs> I met him. You did? I, that's right. I shook his hand. He had no feeling for the first 30 seconds. <laughs> he said, are you shaking my hand? I can't tell. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know, he's a very good singer. I don't want to put him down. Sure you but don't. Unfortunately, you know, he eats donuts while he sings. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get back to Catherine Harold for a minute? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Ain't she wild, wild huh? Hey. Ain't she something? She's got nipples like hey, eyeballs. Ain't she wild? Yeah. Now, hey, I don't want to say she has a good body, but I'll tell you something. She's like, hey, she looks like a nuclear sub, doesn't she? <laughs> now, she... she's, she's a very beautiful woman, and she's very nice. And uh, well, She was uh, in Modern Romance. <laughs> Right. Another now great movie. There in spelling. And you made her take off her clothes even though you left your underpants on. <laughs> which I... Well, you know, the way men are. <laughs> so, now, men, and... men have this thing and women don't. And <laughs> I read an interview with her where she said she dated you. Well, right, dated right? me? We, hey, she lived with we you. actually lived together. And that her life will never be the same now because you were so interesting even just watching cable TV with you. Just uh, watching the printouts on cable. Hey, isn't that a wild thing? And that's what, something. What a compliment! That's right. Huh? What well, a I was the one who told her to install cable. <laughs> <laughs> but my question is: Yes. Did you start seeing her before or after you made her take off her clothes in the movie? Look, you know, getting a date is tough enough. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I get them because I cast. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> When you, when you go out to a party, they don't ask, how did you get this girl? <laughs> they, just, they just assume that, you know, that she likes you. They didn't know that I said, if you, you don't get this role unless you go out with me. <laughs> I don't tell them that. It's just that I would have a problem. I wouldn't want my girlfriend to be naked in a movie. So I, I know. Was, I was but just that time, uh, during that scene, she wasn't my girlfriend. <laughs> right, well, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering if... That was the case where if you were just truly very sick... Well, no, 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 no. I, I'm different. I want my girlfriend to be naked in a movie. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's hard enough to get passionate. You need things to talk about. <laughs> Honey, let's watch the film again. That's what I say. Remember when all those people saw you naked? You know what I was thinking about? When you, know how excited, you, you know how excited women get when you whisper in their ear, imagine foreigners seeing you naked. <laughs> <laughs> with subtitles. That's right. <laughs> so who are you hanging out with now? Nobody. Oh, Albert. Now, what can I tell you? It's kind of lonely. You know what you should do? You should contact Rolling Stone magazine like Lindsey Buckingham did. And he talked about how lonely he was. And now he's getting mail by the sack full every day from women who want to go out with him. Really? Yeah. Well, I put on the wig and look in the mirror. I don't need anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I figure a twisted sister could do it. So can I. <laughs> but aren't you doing a powdered wig thing for Amadeus? Uh, no, you know, I was, time. you want to know something I'm real, I'm real angry about? You know, Martin Scorsese promised me the role in Raging Bull. <laughs> you put on I the way. I arrived on the set. I was 610 pounds. <laughs> he takes me off to the side. He says, we've changed our mind. <laughs> you know how hard it is to lose 500 pounds? Uh, you've had a real checkered career, huh, Aldrin? Just like a cab. Yeah. yeah. Did, well. you, did I read that you ran out of money? During, <laughs> during, during, well, where, Baron? What do you mean? During, during the filming of uh, Lost in America. No, 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 not Lost in America. I did not run out of money. 
No. I ran out of money in Las Vegas filming Lost in America because one night we finished early and I went down to the blackjack table and I got a little cocky and I worked on this system, but I had read this book by a Polish man <laughs> who said, freeze on four. <laughs> and I did, and I lost my hat. Uh, now, was Gary Marshall uh, actually laughing uh on his own during that scene you did with him? I mean, because it looked pretty ad-libbed at some point. Well, you know, it's a mixture. I try to blend. I I, uh, I don't know how Gary Marshall laughs, but uh, I just keep the best of what I get. But that's an Gee, you guys asked the best question. I, you know, I have a list here of other questions. May I tell you what Vancouver, Canada asked me? <laughs> yeah, sure. Where did you get that shirt? <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Was that a real Derwiner Schnitzel outfit? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Did Skippy really Did work the at the Derwiner Schnitzel? Of, an, of a spare tire. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So um, that tell was me your... something. Yeah. What, how are your ratings? They're very good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now the helicopter does does that work for other stations or just for you? Well, I think we do it because other stations do it. It's kind of a reactionary thing. Uh huh. Except it's only up for an hour a day. So we talk about it a lot, but it flies very little. You know, about, about two years ago, I, I, uh, I had nothing to do when a station in Phoenix, Arizona said, would you like to come down and host for a week? And I did, and believe it or not, they had a helicopter. And when I tell you, there aren't 1,200 cars in all of Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> they said, cut to the helicopter. I cut to the helicopter, you heard it. <laughs> and the guy said, no traffic, cut to you. <laughs> I don't understand. Would you really host a radio show? Uh, for I a really, week? really did for a week. It was fun. They also had one of those people, gee, I shouldn't probably be giving this away, but that's all right, because WRS doesn't go to Phoenix. It does go to Denver. Maybe one of their disc jockeys are on vacation in Denver, but I don't know. But they said they, the, the weather guy came out of Philadelphia, and he was one of these guys who did weather for the whole country. And they said, look, don't give it away. We want them to think that weather is just for us. So, like a fool, I said, now let's go to Philadelphia for the weather. And they hated me for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Radio is a... Uh... Hey, I'm working on a, on a psychic thing. I want you to do something, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Pick a number between one and a hundred. You got it? Yeah. Tell Gary. On the air? No. Just <laughs> whisper in his ear. He's going to write it down for me. Okay. Okay. Is it eight? No. All righty. <laughs> All right, hang on a second. Oh, not we'll... again. We're not... We're not... 12? <laughs> no. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Is it 18? Did, you didn't actually get hassled by these people uh, at the radio station, did you? What, at Phoenix? Yeah. Well, uh, they took away my rented car. Yeah? <laughs> is that wild? That's is that wild? wild? Hey, I'll tell you something. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, ra radio is a very difficult medium to be funny in, you know? Hey, have you guys ever rented a tuxedo? <laughs> it's wild, That's isn't it? For the Academy Awards we did. Yeah, you're going to come out here. Uh, where are you going to stay? We'll tell you off the air if you Motel want Motel 6. Motel 6? Red Roof was all booked up. We had to go Motel 6. Yeah, well, that's We're sick it. about it. It's Motel 10 now. Yeah. Okay, Albert, Albert Brooks. For a second. Huh? Can I interrupt for a second? Sure. Are you selling Cuban motor oil? Uh, Castrol? Oh, I didn't hear the oil. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> It's the best, though. I hear they make good oil down there. Cuba? Yeah. Hey, they make wild oil. They get it right from their hair, I think. Is that wild? It's, it's wild. wild. <laughs> it's wild. So did you run out of money on one of your films then? Or did I read my confusing things? No, you're confusing things. Okay. But you, it is, you've you had trouble raising money, right? I've Cuba. always had trouble raising money. I saw you on Letterman talking about Texas oil guys, and you had to get them hookers and stuff. And That's all they want. They listen to your project, they nod, and then at the end they say, let me ask you something, Albert. How can I get laid? <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, you know, I know hookers now, so probably I'll get money easier. <laughs> it should be easier the next time for you, though, yeah? Yeah, but, you, you know, you never can tell. It's a weird country. I mean, you know, when, when, we, when we have a president who wears two hearing aids <laughs> and doesn't have any of his own teeth, how easy do you think it is for me? Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So what movies have you seen lately that you liked? Well, I don't see many movies, Stephen Gary. <laughs> you know, Nancy and I don't like to be influenced. <laughs> but we did see a tape of E.T., and God knows I hope something lands here. Because without it, we're going to war. But thank God that mean man died at the in the Soviet Union. Because if he didn't, 
Well, I can't. I couldn't negotiate with him. Quite <laughs> frankly, I don't even understand what the interpreter is saying. <laughs> of course, I can't hear well. <laughs> but you know, my son is a ballet dancer, <laughs> and that doesn't mean that he doesn't uh, like women. It's just that when he's out on a date, he's mostly on his toes. <laughs> What movies have I seen? Yeah. Well, I saw a baby. <laughs> Three men in a monster suit. <laughs> and let's see what else I saw. I saw, uh, uh, gosh, I haven't seen a lot of movies lately because I've been, you know, I was working uh, in an editing room for so long that I, I uh, was afraid to go out and see uh, another movie. But uh, <laughs> now I'm going to start seeing. What movies have you? No, don't, don't answer. Because, you know, I don't want. Why should I mention... Another movie on your show. That's right. Here well. I am paying for the call. <laughs> <laughs> Why should I plug another movie? You don't have to. Although I did see a foreign film called Je de Soir Trois. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think it'll be coming to you guys. No. <laughs> no. Have you seen Mask? Mask? <laughs> because I've only seen the commercials and I'm afraid the guy looks like Sonny. I'll tell you something quite frankly. I am not a fan of calcium deposits. <laughs> I, I just don't know. But, you know, I did see uh, Elephant Man, and uh, I, I think if, you, if you've seen Elephant Man, you've seen it all. Yeah. All the calcium deposits yeah. are active. Yeah. This is Elephant Boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I was out at Warner Brothers today, and I, I must tell you, you know, I know some inside stuff. There's a brand new movie about a boy that looks like a giraffe. <laughs> he has a long neck and a huge calcium <laughs> deposit in his forehead. And they're trying to get uh, Captain and Tennille to play the lead. <laughs> I want to tell you, they're Captain and Tennille's wild. They're wild. wild. <laughs> they're wild. Uh, they're wild. Have you ever bought one of those uh, books, uh, those maps of the stars' homes? Yes, that's how I get home when I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Well, in one of the... No, I... No, I never bought one. I don't think they're accurate. Well, we, I don't know about that. Although we did find Sammy Davis Jr.'s house. You did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he had like a whole Christmas display up, which I thought was interesting because he's Jewish. Well, you know, but he's a, he's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and, he had... and, and he's one of those Jews that, that celebrate every conceivable holiday there is. <laughs> and I he... met him on the street, and he was praying to the east, and I said, what are you doing? And he said, hey, babe, I'm a Muslim between four and five. <laughs> <laughs> he had a little ranch house, and he had a guard house on, at the end of the driveway, which was bigger than his house. Well, people are out to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need a guard when you reach 60 and you're under 4 foot 8. <laughs> <laughs> in the book, uh, in the book that we bought, uh, they show the captain and Tennille's house. And it, in by the, the way, I must say the captain and Tennille do not live together anymore. Oh no! No, the captain lives with one of the carpenters, and the Tennille, <laughs> I think, is shacked up with uh, Neil Simon. <laughs> but I'm not sure, and I don't want to go on record. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. They have the, the uh, in the picture. Uh, it shows their dogs copulating on their front. Lawn. <laughs> yes, it does. Those are not dogs. <laughs> Those are their agents. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I just thought that was an interesting fact. Hey, when you guys send me a tape, I can send this to Canada. <laughs> For what? I mean, why do you want to send it to Canada? Why not? They're starved up there. <laughs> yeah. Sure, we'll send you a tape. Thank you. What do you did you ever see that uh, 60 Minutes piece on India about their movie making? India. I don't believe that country exists. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something. Well, I don't, I'm sorry. All this bad publicity about Union Carbide. May I tell you something? I bought a toy. That battery lasted for six months. <laughs> How bad do you think they really are? <laughs> that little monkey is still clapping those cymbals. Oh, uh, okay. So, anyway. Yeah. So, lost well, in we're a... We're thinking about... The news where Union Carbide said they figured out the problem. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. They figured out the problem. Uh, there was a leak. Yeah. We they think... had some experts go down there and say there was a leak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, did you guys hear about the Jew, the priest, and, and the atheist that went to heaven? No. Oh, me neither. I thought you knew it. <laughs> We're thinking about getting into the motion picture business in India because they crank out how many a day? About uh, 600 a day. Yeah. 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 But uh, I, I just pitched an idea to an Indian studio called Chop Up the Cow. 
<laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be maybe Passage to America. No. It's a, it's a whole story about the, it's a, it's, it's a, a Charles Bronson film where he thinks a cow raped his daughter. <laughs> he's, he's out to cut off the head of every cow. But, uh, you know, the same old story, they said they think about it. <laughs> of course, in India, that's a compliment. But, you know, Vanessa Redgrave is in the news again. She wanted to find God. Yeah? Yeah, so she's going to meet with Shirley MacLaine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are coming out for the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. the Oscars. Yeah. Very exciting. You're going to be on the red carpet? Yes, we are. Well, you know, I just wish I could hear you. Maybe I'll go to Chicago for that time. <laughs> yeah, fly in. Well, yeah. you're more than welcome to come by if you want to come by. No, I, I do not like to rent clothes. <laughs> You've got a point there. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, really. All right, well, listen, um, we... Uh, we were big fans of real life, modern romance, and uh, every time you pull one out, I think to myself, how can he top the last one? But you've done it again. Lost Thank in you. America. It's I, truly classic. I wasn't sure. And finally, it's, you are getting the recognition you deserve for the films that you've been making all along. And so are you. <laughs> <laughs> I well, called you, you on, the other, on the other films. You, you saw Grandview. Huh? You saw Grandview. I was in a movie. I was in Grandview, USA. I, uh, I didn't see it. I played a small-town disc jockey. But, uh, but I'll tell you something. I just got HBO about two weeks ago, so it should be coming yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> It'll be on. Don't worry. And he just makes me a while with those puppets. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you were at the Hoover Dam, uh, it was not too clear, but you could see Snackateria. Snackateria. Oh, you guys saw that. You're the best guys that ever lived. Thank you. <laughs> because I said to Steve... Uh, did that say Snackateria? And he said, yes, I've been there. It is Snackateria. Oh, I love you guys. No one in the world has spotted that. That was my favorite thing. Can you believe that? There is one of the great national monuments with a thing called Snackateria. <laughs> I could. And I said to Steve, I said, did Albert make that up and put that sign up? And he said, no, no I've been I there. No, have to. This is America. They make a few things for you. You should go in there. They sell popcorns with pictures of the president on the tunnels. <laughs> So, I was real happy to hear it's a real place. It's a real place. Oh, I love you guys for seeing that. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You're the only guys on radio that have good vision. <laughs> really? Well, Albert, uh, we're uh, pleased that you called. Well, I'm pleased you answered. Yeah, well, it's a mutual thing then. All right. No, I thought you were on WLS. Yeah. Oh, 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 you meant, oh, I see what you mean. An ABC station that has been sold. Yeah. Our well, futures thanks. are in jeopardy. Does this mean we're hanging up? Well, if you want to hang around for a little longer, we'll be happy to talk to you. Well, I don't want to overstay my well, welcome, we, but we uh, have to quite do... frankly, I have nothing to do. <laughs> well, okay, well, let's do the news then. And why don't you stay on for the news? You Fine, can... I'll do the news. <laughs> Fine. Fine. President Reagan gets two hearing aids. <laughs> All right, we're going to... Uh, well, so, and then after that, we'll take the calls. Maybe I should hang up. What do you think? you want me to stay no, on? No, we no, we want you to stay. We didn't want to We don't want to impose yeah. on your time. Oh, do, I'll, I'll do you a favor. While you're doing the news, let me do a, a, a live radio thing with Singapore, and I'll be back with you in a minute. <laughs> but you can stay on during the news if you want, because we do, and we just make comments and stuff. I can? Yeah. Yes. You mean I can make comments about the news? Yes. Sure. Well, I just bought a videotape machine from Singapore. Let me talk to these people. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, just stay there, and we'll play commercials, and then do the news. I'll stay right here. Just tell me when it's not so serious that I can cut in. Because <laughs> I didn't even know you were going to talk about air fresheners. That's that's very. Hey, you've been air freshener a while. <laughs> while. Hey, do, hey, don't you love when you go to the bathroom and it makes it okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, tired of hearing Clara Peller say, "Where's the beef?" Uh oh. You'll never hear it again. Clara's just signed to she become. She died. A... Oh, no. I thought she passed away. <laughs> no. She signed on for Campbell's spaghetti. Get the spaghetti. air freshener out. <laughs> she signed on for Campbell's spaghetti sauce, so the people at Wendy's have decided not to use her again. Incidentally, Oop. where's the soup? Right. <laughs> Apparently, Clara's campaign worked out with Wendy's. They had a 31 percent increase in annual sales during that uh, campaign. That was not her. What do you mean? What happened? The burgers were free for those months. Oh. <laughs> That was the campaign that got the 31% uh, increase, huh? That's right. Come to Wendy's. We don't charge. <laughs> Had to do it. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And the campaign did not do much for Fritz Mondale, who used it as a campaign slogan. He was BB. That's right. Where's the election? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he could uh, now be the new spokesperson for Wendy's. He's looking for work. I hear his daughter is going to Hollywood, I think. His daughter is very, very attractive. Are you going to cast her, Albert? Well, I think that she and my son... 
might work out if my son liked women. <laughs> we saw her on uh, election night, and I'm sure you did too, up on the podium in the black lacy dress with the one glove on. Very hot. Very mm -hmm, hot sure. and very ready to party, and there was obviously no, no, no party to go to, party, to that yeah. night. Isn't that sad? We yeah. wanted to fly up to Minneapolis and party with her. Just the to only get one out of her system. party with Maureen Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> and who wants to party with her? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How come everybody in Minneapolis has to wear one glove? I mean, Prince and everybody is. No, Maureen is very pretty if you have no sight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, remember during the Olympics when a guy ran down a group of pedestrians with his car in Los Angeles? Hap actually happened out the night That's going to be an event now, right? Right. What happened? In 88? One person died, dozens were injured. Today the guy was sentenced to 106 years in jail. Gee, he's, all, he's, he's already be, 40. How's he going to make it? Well, he'll <laughs> probably be eligible for parole in three years, knowing California's... You know what they do in California? Mm -hmm. They keep people there for the entire thing, even if they pass away. <laughs> <laughs> we have the smelliest prisons in America. <laughs> okay, now here's one. There's a book out now that says, makes the conclusion that uh, whomever balances the checkbook in a relationship or marriage, in other words, whoever, whomever writes the bills or uh, balances the checkbook, is the one who's in charge of sex. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to get into a threesome. <laughs> <laughs> With your accountant? Yeah, that's right. A new book called Sex and Money. Corey, but... it's hey. Albert. Can you come over <laughs> and bring a felt tip? <laughs> a cafelta tip. Well, the psychologist offers the theory that the person who pays the bills usually controls what goes on in the bedroom. For instance, uh, she says how we spend money reflects how we have sex. A thrifty person is likely that to be That must thrifty. be why my wife was screaming, you're overdrawn, <laughs> last night at me. That's now, would that apply to a hooker who says, write me a check this second? <laughs> I think so. All right. A thrifty person is likely to be thrifty and cautious with sex. Big spenders are likely to like a lot of sex in a lot of different ways. God, it's the opposite with me. Is that right? That's right. You're not a big spender? No, I say to them, look, if you had an orgasm, they say yes. I said, so it should be free, right? <laughs> 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 and this book says that the way we spend money may affect the sex lives of our children. People who throw money around like it's going out of style are likely to have kids who seek instant sexual gratification. I think that's a despicable story. And living close to Manhattan Beach like I do, I'd rather you wouldn't even talk about it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> hey, have you seen that Liz Taylor? <laughs> At the Prince concert? Ain't you wild? Don't get these guys started on more Bob Hope. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jim. See you later. Good night. Good have, an, uh, have a great week. In fact, when you come back, I'll, I'm, well, I'll tell, that's right, I'll be doing the news a couple days out of town, then I'm taking a week and a half off. Okay, hey, Jim. Hey, hey, Jim? Later. Yeah. Did you see Lost in America? Not yet. Well, you will, won't you? Sure. Take the wedding people with you. <laughs> We're all going to go tonight. Hey, fantastic. It's a great honeymoon. Could it be a... It's one of the few movies you can have sex in. <laughs> We need separate seats or... Uh... No, no, one seat. Okay. So you hurt your back. It's your honeymoon. Okay. <laughs> You're so long. You're a funny guy. Thank you. So are you. So long. <laughs> I was doing the news seriously. I know. So what can I tell you? <laughs> so we long. have uh, Les on the phone yeah, to do wait sports. to hear this guy. And now Les Grobstein with sports. You know, this guy uh, caused me to mess up a little bit on the front seat of the rental car. Mm. While I, was driving I hope it wasn't a home. velour seat. Uh, no, no, just leather seat, regular leather, but... You run a pretty nice, uh, brand of car. Was it real leather? Or Mercedes leather? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want no, leather? Put a leather. pair of shoes in. <laughs> <laughs> Rented leather. <laughs> hey, is that wild? <laughs> yeah. It made me laugh too hard while I was trying to inhale a Mountain Dew. <laughs> I spit it up all over the seat. But, uh, th th this guy's one of the funniest guys I've ever heard. How about that Mountain Dew, huh? Hey, is that wild, that Mountain Dew? <laughs> I want to tell you. <laughs> hey, wait. hey, have you tried that Valley Dew? <laughs> no, but I, it sounds good. It's flat. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 no, I better not say that. I was going to ask if it uh, regurgitates as easily as this stuff does. Hey, I wouldn't touch that with a one-foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of questions about Lost in America and a former movie. Uh, were the uh, guys in the drugstore and the employment office actors or real people? Well, see, isn't that a tribute to uh, to Lost in America? They are actors. Wow. They are actors that that are that are supposed to be real people. You know, it's funny when you said that because even people that I know out here that are in films said to me. One guy said to me, "I know he's your, you, you're referring to the pharmacist. Right. He's he's like this immensely wonderfully real guy." And this friend of mine who's a filmmaker said, "Was he there when you got there?" 
I said, God, where? What do you mean? I, what do you think this is? <laughs> God, where? What do you think? I just walked in. I had a whole crew with me. That's amazing. Thank you. They're so good. And, and who were those little kids? Those kids were, uh, well, one of the kids was the producer's kid. That's why he was so naturally pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I think he hurt his father at night. <laughs> and your manager was in the Mercedes that went by? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Albert, I want to be... In, in uh, Rocky. He was Sylvester Stallone's manager. He was in Rocky, but he wasn't any good in Rocky. <laughs> yeah. That's because Stallone really doesn't know how to draw him out of him. <laughs> And in uh, and were you called Brillo Pad Fathead in school? No, no, just, no. I made that up. Mm -hmm. I was called Brillo Pad Pighead in school. <laughs> <laughs> was the apartment in Modern Romance actually your apartment? Why talk about a previous picture, buddy? Well, well I, you can buy it now in video stores. Can't oh, you? fine. What was the question? <laughs> uh, was the apartment you used in Modern Romance your apartment or no, house? No, it was not. It was, uh, it was, but it was someone who was on the crew's apartment. Oh. And the bird was not your bird or anything. It was not my bird, but uh, I kept it after the show. <laughs> but you know what I found out? What? You have to feed those things. Really? Yeah, it passed away after four days. <laughs> Petey? Yes, Petey passed Petey. away. I thought it would live on the fact that it was in a movie. <laughs> but you have to give them food. And I gave them food, but it can't peck through a piece of swordfish. <laughs> Let's take some calls. All right, you're in Hello. the air with Albert Brooks. How you doing? Let me turn down my radio, please. All turn right. your, turn radio your radio down. down. Let me hang up. So, uh, <laughs> Albert, I'm going to be recording this, so if you would, could you give me a sound check, a uh, voice level there? Just testing one, two, three. Hey, don't you know the pirate rule? <laughs> what do you mean you're going to be recording this? Well, I'd like to, uh, you know. All right, go ahead. Hello, one, two, three. <laughs> That's a little louder, please. <laughs> How do you like this? People, That's, they become Nazis. That's perfect, right there. Fine. Albert. Yes, sir. Uh... Pleasure to talk to you. One of my favorite comedians, Steve Gary. You know what I think of you. Yes. Listen, I'm a comedian myself, and I thought <laughs> Albert could possibly give me a critique of a couple of my jokes here, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. I don't think funny, but I am funny. <laughs> you know what alimony is, don't you, Albert? Alimony? Yeah, it's like pumping gas into another man's car. Oh, is that wild? Isn't that crazy? Hey, all righty. I'm a subject of animals. I'm writing it down. Huh? I'm the subject of animals. If you cross a sheep with a mink, you get an animal willing to have sex that already has a fur coat. Uh, not bad. Not bad, huh? Are you recording this? Yeah. You're very funny. This is going to be, you know, this is, this is my break here. Uh, go ahead. You're very funny. Right after this, this goes to Ed McMahon. Hey, I'm the subject of old age. This goes to Ed yeah, McMahon. Don't try to understand females. By the time you learn to read girls like a book, your library card is expired. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you get on a plane? <laughs> hey, do you think I'm too old, though, seriously, to, to make my break now? How old are you? I'm 55, but every girl I know takes me for 50. <laughs> I think that I think you're $50? at the prime age, man. Make a suggestion. What's that? Go to the Orient. <laughs> They're hungry for these kind of guys. I think you want to be in a continent where people are shorter than you. <laughs> Hello, you're in the air. Hi, Steve. Hi, Gary. Hi. Hi, Hi Albert. Hi. I'm looking forward to see your movie. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm looking. To, did you make a film? No, but I will if you want me to. I'll run and see it. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I think you're very talented. Thank you, and I think you have a nice voice. Oh, thank you. Have you ever had phone sex? No, but I'm willing to try. <laughs> All right, lie down. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Are you asleep? Am I what? Are you asleep? <laughs> I can be. I'm into necrophilia. Oh, good. That's, Go ahead. That's nice. Thank you. Um, I just, I, I can't follow the last guy that was on. I, I don't have anything funny to say. He was very funny. Wasn't he, though? You don't he think he hated... too old. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't think I'm he... I'm real young. How old are you? 23. Really? Really? Nice. Do you live alone? He's on a huh? roll. Do you, live, do, you, do you live alone? Yeah. Give me the first two numbers of your address. <laughs> he's one, he's one. psychic. One one? Yeah. Is the last two numbers two eight? No. All righty, go ahead. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hello, you're in the air. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, Albert. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you know what? We'll think about that gentleman right uh, two callers ago. What got, about him? Huh? What about him? <laughs> he got those jokes out of one of those mini mags that you find in the supermarkets. Well, now he made a fool out of me after I told him he was funny. <laughs> uh, Steve, Gary? Yes, yes. Yeah, hi. This is Michael you know me as Buddy Black, and boy, this has got to be one of the best shows that you have ever done. 
Thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Albert? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm recording this right now. Could you speak just a little bit louder, please? <laughs> what, the, what the hell is this? This recording? Don't you know it's illegal? <laughs> Don't you get the congressional record? <laughs> You're not allowed to do this. <laughs> Albert? Yes, sir. Um, yes. Um, I just want to thank you for all the people who are playing harmonica now, because you have taught everyone how to play their harmonica the right way. Can, can I just play some for you? Please go ahead. <laughs> and I play 11 other instruments. I like you very much. May I, may, may, may I make a suggestion? Yes. Yeah. Call that 65-year-old man and take him to dinner. <laughs> Hello, you're, you're in the, the air. air with Albert Brooks. Hello? Hi. Yes. Hi, Albert. Hi. Hi, Steve. Hi, Gary. Uh, hi. hi. <laughs> I just want to tell Albert. Ozzy and Harriet, go ahead. <laughs> what? It sounds like the old Ozzy and Harriet show. Hi, David. Hi, Rick. Go ahead. <laughs> I think you are one of the funniest men ever. This is great. I can't believe I'm talking to you. Well, that's all right. I'm, you're not really talking to me. I'm uh, I'm a Ron Smith lookalike. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah. Who's Ron Smith? Yes. <laughs> Who's Ron Smith? Ron, uh, never mind. It was a local joke. Go ahead. <laughs> This is great. I mean, I used to watch you on Saturday Night Live when you did them small tapes. And what happened? Show. You went blind? Yeah, I yeah. did. <laughs> and then uh, your Modern Romance was a great movie. Thank you. Have, you. have you seen Lost in America? No, I haven't got downtown yet, but I'm planning on seeing it next week. Please go tonight. If it doesn't do well this weekend, I'm out of the business. <laughs> no, I don't think you'll ever be out of business. Thank over. you, sir. Can I ask you something about... Dan Aykroyd, are you pretty good friends with him? Cause I only met him once when I did the Twilight Zone, but of course, be, being in Hollywood, we're very close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would like to kiss his wife. Oh, and so would everybody else. That's right. <laughs> That's why he probably keeps on her rock and chain. That's right. She's a very beautiful woman. She sure is. She and a the fine actress. Buddy. Yep. That's right. And I wanted to tell Steve and Gary something, if it's okay. Please, I'll be quiet. Okay. <laughs> I think this is one of your best shows, and uh, the other one that... The other one that comes close is the one when you had uh, uh, Rick Moranis and uh, Bob the Thomas guy. Rick Dave Thomas. Thomas. Hey, is he wild? And that yeah, guy's he's crazy. Wild. <laughs> he's wild. Hey, he was wild, man. He's so wild. what he's you're wild. saying is our best shows are when we have other people on. Well, it helps. To be funny for us. What is your name? Who's calling? My name's Randy. Randy, think of a number between 1 and 50. Okay. Is it 41? You got it. Hang up. <laughs> Thank Goodbye, you. Randy. Thank you. Bye. Hello, you're, you're in the air with Albert. Hello, uh, Stephen Gary. Yes, with Albert Brooks. Okay, with Albert Brooks. Oh, wow, I've been trying to get through for ages, and we're on delay, right? Ages, you mean like since the beginning of the, when the Christians took over the New World? <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. How'd you know? Because I'm psychic. Oh, wow. Um, am I going to pick a number or what? Uh, one in a hundred. Um, okay. What is it? Um, 48. I was not even close. Go on. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Stephen Gary, I just want to know, uh, when are you going to give, uh, Jumpin' Jim the gyrocopter, uh, the gyro captain equal billing with you guys? He talks enough. The news guy? Yeah. The complaint department is closed for today, sir. Um, We're doing sure. something else. Um, very quickly. Yeah. Um, you're, wait a minute, just a minute. You're dressed, right? Uh, no, I'm in <laughs> naked furniture. No, but seriously, you're dressed. Right. Do you have on a sweater? Uh, yeah, if you want me to. No, I'm being serious. Do you have on a sweater? <laughs> no. Do you have on just a shirt? Yeah. Is there green in the shirt? Uh, yeah. Is there white in the shirt? Yeah. Have I ever met you? Um, I don't think so. Talk to them. Okay. <laughs> and we'll be back with Albert. Can you still hang on? Yeah, sure. No, not you. No. Oh, don't let him hang on. <laughs> not him. <laughs> He's you, gone. Albert. He was through. And we're talking with Albert Brooks. His movie Lost in America is playing at the McClurg Court Theater downtown A here. A must-see. Hey, Don? He's gone. Don? Is he there? He's gone. Hello. Yeah. Don? Hello. Are you near the airport right now? <laughs> Why? I just wanted to know if that American Airlines 801 from L.A. has landed. <laughs> I'll check on it. Get I right have back. some luggage on it. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and speaking of George Kennedy, it was because of him that Bolero did not do well. Is that Bolero. Can... I'll tell you something. Have you ever seen sex scenes that weren't so sexy? It's amazing. Uh, yeah. And but uh, that was a good movie. Yeah, George Kennedy was superb in that movie. No, I always <laughs> wanted to see Bo make it with a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> that completes the trilogy. <laughs> the trilogy. <laughs> what, that and a dog? What do you mean? <laughs> uh, let's take some calls. Uh, for... Hello, you're in the air. How you doing, Steve? Fine. You Sounds like you've got that uh, dreaded throat cancer, though. Oh, no. It's, uh, I'm a guy from the Rolling Stone from yesterday. Uh, Keith, this is Keith, right? No. Woody? The jacket? Woody? The jacket? Um, Bill. Oh, yeah, Bill. 
Uh, sir, Mick? I, uh, Mick? You don't sound like Mick. Yeah. I, I give up. Which Rolling Stone are you, sir? Oh, no, I'm just the one who was standing outside your window yesterday. Oh, in the Rolling Stone silk uh, yeah. tour jacket. You called me a mass murderer. Bill? Yes. It's Albert Brooks. Did you see that television movie, Jonestown? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, yeah? Were you a fan of it? <laughs> yes, I like, enjoyed it very much. I thought you did. <laughs> you drink Kool-Aid? <laughs> no, not actually. Do you like well, re regular? I'm with NutraSweet. You might try it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you like regular or pre-poisoned? Pre-poisoned. Okay. You know, Albert, actually, it's funny because he's gone now. We can talk about him behind his back. Bill's gone? Yeah. Yesterday, I accused him of being a mass murderer. Because really? he looks like one outside, yeah. And you had no way of knowing that. You've never you're met psychic. me before. I told you I'm psychic. Mm -hmm. Hello, you're in the air. Steve, dear man, Al. Yeah, Hi. Larry King with Rex Reed. And, uh, no, wait. This My favorite thing that Albert does when people call him Al. Albert, yes. He my name is me. Albert. Yeah, but I love it when you do that, too, when you correct people. Albert? My name is Lisa. Yes. Okay. They go, uh, they, they go, like, they go Al. He goes, Albert, yes. Um... You but I guess we're not going to hear that today. Yes, sir, I've had it. This is now my third film. What, what was the name of the first movie? I, I, you know, Real Life. Real Life? Yes. Would you like to see it? Yeah, I would. May I make a suggestion? Yeah. Go to a cassette store, take out a gun and threaten them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'll do that. Please. <laughs> oh, um, and then don't, Steve and Gary, they play like a tape of where you act like you're a DJ or something? Well, I don't know that. I don't live in Chicago, but I trust that they do. Yeah, um, what's that on? I have no idea. What do you have, who the hell am I to know what you mean? <laughs> it's from a. It's from a star is bought. Oh yes, that's what it is. Yes, I did a. I did a bit on that album. That's what they mean. What album? I a, don't know. A star is bought. A star is bought. Oh, okay. And uh, did you see Lost in America? Yeah, I did. I saw it last week. It was great. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed that it. That one scene in at the the dam in the in the camper in the Winnebago. You like that? I was. I was crying. It was so funny. It was great. If you leave your address with Steve, I'll send you two fifty. <laughs> it was five bucks. Well, I, I can't help that. I can only send you half. Well, <laughs> well, no, I'm out two fifty. Well, I'm not a rebate performer. <laughs> rebate performer. Thanks for calling. Oh wait, Steve. Uh, oh, what? Steve. What? What? Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say this is one of the funniest shows. No, no, no. I'm just joking. You guys are great anyway. You mm. guys are great anyway. You don't need me. I remember <laughs> you when I wasn't on you. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you, sir. Thanks. So long. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. One, one more. You're one a more. nice listeners, buddy. <laughs> Hello, You're Al in the air with Albert. Albert. Yes, sir. You're wonderful. All three of you guys are the funniest people I've ever heard. Well, what do you think we are? The Three Stooges? <laughs> <laughs> you could be the next Three Stooges. <gasps> uh, <gasps> I feel terrible. You know, I've never seen an Albert Brooks movie. Well, are you going to see Lost in America? I certainly am. All righty. It's going to be great, <laughs> I can tell. You can tell. Just May I make a suggestion? Yeah. Don't get butter on the popcorn. Uh, well, I never do. It's not so really butter anyway. Say. Fine. I uh, just want to say... I make teeth for a living, and if you ever need teeth, I'd be glad to make them for you. It'd be Wait a minute, you make teeth for a living? Yes, I do. You're a doctor? No, I'm a technician. Oh, great. I'd love to get teeth from a non-doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, technicians make them. All right, man. If I leave you my address, will you send me two wisdom teeth? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You guys are great. We'll see you. So bye -bye. He uh, made teeth for Richie Havens. <laughs> we, know, we know that for a fact. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, well, we got to get going here because we have a couple things we have to do before we get out of here. All right, well, listen, this was a great deal of fun for me, and thank you, guys. And, uh, you know, when you come to L.A., just have a ball. And if you need anything, uh, if you need to, you know, if you need a gal, call me. Okay, we will. <laughs> All righty. Right. Thank you, Albert. Thanks, and, and feel free to, when you're in town, to stop by any time, or if uh, you ever have something you want to do, just give us a call. Send love... me a tape so I can just send this to Washington. I don't have to repeat it. <laughs> we'll send you a tape. All right, think of another one hundred and fifty. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Six? No. no. All right, see you no. later. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Albert Brooks. He should try and be funnier. Yeah.